Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we are continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content featuring a double horse team in Spectria and Glastria. Uh, we've got the nice supporting cast of Clefairy, going to be one of the best supporting options that we've got access to in Series 9 with that friend guard redirection, help and hand support. Uh, just a really awkward Pokemon to kind of deal with and uh, play around as well. Uh, we've got Incineroar obviously going to be a nice pokemon for intimidate support fake out support and really kind of allow the the whole team to kind of function and help us pivot out in different board positions we know what incineroar does and why it's one of the best pokemon in the format we've got taunt on it as well which helps us shut down opposing threats and especially trick room although we do have the glass trail that we've mentioned that does preferably like that trick room environment and then kind of rounding off with a nice fire water grass call with the urshifu rapid strike variant in there we had a request for that i think last week or the week before so whoever you are i'm sorry i don't have your name off the top of my head but i hope you enjoyed today's episode in particular as the rest of you and then running off with cartana and because we've got the focus sash on urshifu and we've got the assault vest on glastria we're kind of tied for an item on what we play on the cartana now going back to previous formats that we've had in past generations going with the scope lens variant with boosts uh critical hit ratios and we've got substitute on their cortana so you know the plan is not to really max it that much and just utilize that substitute to try and create room for us with the rest of the pokemon that we've got on the field and then pick up you know like key critical hits when we can as we can with cortana and just be disruptive and one of the biggest threats to the team is going to be something like type of Finny, which is prominent in the format at the minute and cortana can deal with it pretty easily as well as you know things like a rillaboom that are going to pop up as well and particularly if we see in Cineral coming in which can be a little bit difficult for us to deal with we do have the Urshifu of course with that critical hit ratio but if we can get Cortana in a nice position behind the sub it's not immediately threatened by these fire types like it normally would be so we'll see how the team plays we'll have a couple of games with it as always there is a poker piece down below in the description if you want to try it out on showdown or just take a look at the details etc uh, and if you stick around till the end of the episode we'll throw a rental up with the team so without further ado friends let's get into our first match of today okay up first we have an alolan marowak jinx porygon 2 tapu finny galarian articuno and kartana so quite an interesting team here you've got fake out support from the jinx obviously a sleep threat there as well with the lovely kiss um oh the trick room is going to be a big thing for my opponent i think the main thing for my opponent's team obviously with the fake out there helping kind of set up from the porygon 2 obviously the competitive as well from the galarian articuno it's going to be difficult for us to kind of get spectra going here uh, but glastria could do a decent job of course um i wonder what the best kind of road for us to go down here is do we go spectra and kind of try and blow things up initially might not be a bad idea and have the the horse in the back the other option is obviously going with cortana up top um I think Incineroar is always going to be a nice option, just with the fake out support, the Intimidate support as well. Got to watch out for that uh, Galarian Articuno, but not too bad if we do see it lead against Spectria. Uh, I think we'll bring Glastria in the back and mm, maybe Urshifu, uh, maybe not as well. Clefairy could be a nice option. I think the Cortana we'll go with. Uh, we've got to be very careful around the Marowak, of course, with Cortana. But I think in the late game, it could probably do a job for us, especially against things like uh, Tapu Fini and the Jinx that might be a little bit problematic otherwise. So, see how we get on in this first one. A different archetype of team that we're going up against. Obviously not something that you kind of come across every day, but always nice to see these different variants. Um, okay, we're seeing Jinx and the Marat come out from my opponent. Does Jinx get ally switch? Does it? Urgh makes me wonder we can always fake out the jinx and just nuke the marowak that can always be an option um it's probably not a bad one to kind of start us off with at least do i max or do i just shadow ball it though <sighs> do i pull the trigger do i pull the trigger this early on yeah let's do it max phantasm let's go for it fake out they may fake out our incineral but if they do then they're going to take a big max phantasm from us for their troubles and if they go for the ally switch here at least we can kind of prevent it uh 
at least from the Jinx's perspective, we know that Alola Marowak gets it. I'm pretty sure Jinx probably gets it as well. But are we going to see it? Oh, it's a P2 coming in, isn't it? Ah, of course it is. Ah. <laughs> Pulling the trigger, baited in. Turn one with these threats. Not ideal. And we still got that ally switch threat going into a... Uh... Ah, okay. Well... Service is right, it teaches us a lesson. We do have Taunt on uh, Incineroar though, so we can potentially shut down the P2 in the Trick Room going into turn two. So it's not the worst scenario. As long as we get a fake out onto this Jinx and kind of potentially break a Sash, that'll be, we'll be fine. Jinx goes for fake out, denying us our fake out. It's still got that Sash attached to it, which isn't ideal. Uh, we don't affect the, uh, the P2. The problem now is of course, um, Mm, actually, we could max strike. Mm, max strike, Incineroar. Probably not going to be able to outspeed the Jinx. Is a lovely kiss going to hit though? That's the pro that's the big thing. Let's go for it. Let's go for no, not into the. We don't want to go into the P two again. We want to go max Phantasm into the Jinx. We want to go for a taunt into that P two and shut it down. Prevent that trick room from getting set up. We just got to dodge a lovely kiss, which I. I I think we can. I think we can dodge one. Might not even be sashed. It is though. Of course it is. Go on. <sighs> Go on. Dodge. Dodge. Dodge the kiss. We don't want kissed off you, Jinx. We don't want kissed off you. No way. Just let's dodge it. Come on. Okay. Well, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. You know, I can. I can deal with that. I can cope with that. Um, can definitely cope with that. It's better than. Seeing the the incineral go to sleep, and allowing the Marowak some uh, some room to move. Uh, okay, 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 okay. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? A uh, lovely kiss. We need to get rid of the Jinx. You know, we need to get rid of it. I think we flare blitz into that slot. Um, let's max quick into the P two because it could switch into the the Marowak. Um, although we're, we are gonna just stay asleep, aren't we? So we'll flare blitz. Oh, no switches, no switches coming out. It misses. Okay, so that's good. Shadow Ball, not ideal. But we take it. Uh, and we get rid of the uh, the Jinx, which is always useful. Now, we need to wake up this next turn. Because we need to be able to, uh, to get rid of the Marowak. We need to get rid of the Marowak very, very quickly. Or things will get out of hand. And I worry about the Marowak going after the Incineroar this next turn. Because mm. you get rid of the Taunt user and then you're kind of free when the Taunt wears off to set your Trick Room up. Which is never ideal for us. Uh, okay. Come on, Spectria. You don't like snoozing. A kiss was not good. Let's wake up and let's just nuke this Marowak. Um, did we parting shot out onto it as well? Might be worth going for a parting shot out onto it, to be honest, because then we could potentially get Cortana in. Set up a substitute, it might create a bit of room for us, or we get Glastria in. Uh, either or. Ah, it's, the Spectre going to sleep is not ideal. And probably a Shadow Ball uh, probably takes us down. I mean, it's going to be very close, right? From the P2. From that, the, the 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 previous damage. I mean, we should be able to take it. Oh, Marowak gone for the big, the big Dynamaxe. They're probably going after Incineroar, like I said. Anyway, um, Max Quake, and then going Shadow Ball into Spectre. So we need to wake up. We need to get the Shadow Ball off. We need to get the parting shot out, and um, we need to get Incineroar back on the field. I think as well. Spectre wakes up. Come on, there we go. Shadow Ball. Boom! That's what we would like to see. That's what we like to see. Come on, we'll get Cortana in now. We lose Spectre, that's what we want. We want to lose Spectre here. Go down. Ah, oh, go down. We need you to we needed you to go down because we need the Incineroar on the field because I think the taunt may wear off this next turn. Uh it may not as well. Um What do we get on the field? What do we get on the field? Uh, do we get the Cortana or do we get the Glastria? I think what we'll do is we will get 
Cortana on the field because then we can double up into P2 with a Hyper Beam and a Sacred Sword and that should be enough because you've got to think the Marowak is going to go for Max Guard this next turn if that taunt wears off. Max Phantasm coming out. Okay, this, that's fine. We get Incineroar onto the field which is ideal. We get another uh, Intimidate onto it. We've got then the taunt active and fake out for at least another turn so that's that's good we've got the sub as well so yeah there is the taunt wearing off which isn't great but another intimidate is going to be very useful for us um do we taunt or do we fake out here now we fake out we fake out we fake out fake out and we sub because they're going to go Max Flare, for sure. And then we could even go Flare Blitz. If the sun goes up, we could even Flare Blitz Sacred Sword the next turn into the P2. Because, oh well, Marowak's still a bit of an issue. Definitely a big issue. Always going to be a big issue. Marowak's scary Pokemon. Because Glastria will not be able to outspeed it. Although with the double intimidate onto it, it makes it a bit more manageable for sure. But we don't know what, yeah, they're withdrawing. They're not baiting. They're going to go after the Incineroar. Ooh, they got Cortana coming out. Okay. That was the other option, you know. We parting shot here as well, you know. Let's see. Let's see what they do. Substitute. Substitute. Max Flare into Cortana. Okay. Well, Incineroar in a decent spot now where he can go for um, the Cartana. Is it sashed? I very much doubt it. Very much doubt it. We could go for another sub again. We would lose. Yeah, we'll go for the Cartana. And. Do we just detect? Mm, it's a bit risky. They have to double up into us if we go sub again. If not, they just get us. I think we sub again. Yeah, so we get a sub up. So we either have Cortana at the end or they Sacred Sword. Yeah, we should take this. Proca Berry. We'll get rid of the Cortana here, which is ideal. That makes things a lot easier for us. Um, do they go after the Incineroar here? Potentially. Potentially. I think that makes more sense. But if it do, if they do, that's the thing. We've still got the sub kind of intact. So, it's not the end of the world. And they go Max Quake into Incineroar. Yeah, so they're going to go after us. Minus two, though. Yeah, it is still enough. But we've got Glastria to come in. Uh, oh. With the sun up and a flare blitz, it's still pretty. Yeah, too. You know, we're not ah, we're not in the best spot by any means because because we we're just not in the best spot at all. I mean, if they flare blitz us, there's a chance. There is a chance. Actually, what would we do? I think we I think we just. We just high horsepower the Marowak here. Because I've got to be confident that we take... Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to be confident that we take a Flare Blitz in the sun. Minus two. Minus two. You've got to bear in mind that it is bear... I don't know. <laughs> I'm having second thoughts every second here whether we can do this. I do trust in Glastria. I'm just not massively off fair with like Marowak Kalks. Because I haven't played too many of them in this format. So against like with these new Pokemon, it, that's just, you know, it's not an excuse. It's just reality. Like I'm just admitting that I am uh, I need to do some Marowak calcs. And it, for good reason as well. I think it's a good point because Marowak seems to be picking up a lot of popularity recently uh, in the format. I'm just hoping this substitute attracts a bit more attention. And my opponent wants to get rid of it now. They don't want to set the trick room up when, when Cartana's on the field. That's my big, big thinking. Poltergeist, they double up. Okay, so we got it. Yeah, the substitute creating that much kind of distraction for my opponent. 
Um, and the fact that Glastria is probably feeling pretty threatened right now with the sun up, um, even though I felt pretty confident with the fact that we'd probably take it on minus two to the intimidate the parting shot, uh, it was enough. It was enough. So we can close combat and we can go for a sacred sword. And this substitute has kind of won us the game. So I'm really pleased to see it uh, doing some work here because it's, it's maybe one of those sets where you look at and you think, is it worth running? But sometimes, you know, like like we explained at the start of the video, if you're short on item choices and you really want that Pokemon in, in your party to kind of utilize, there's always other options to kind of look at, you know? You don't have to be kind of stuck with just that one one option as we see the Glastria kind of picking up the win for us to kick us off today, which is excellent. So, nice one for us to kick off with today. Very good game to my opponent. Didn't make it easy for us. Sure, showed us the ways with that Marowak as well, how deadly it can be, even without the Trick Room support there. Um, but we can uh, jump into our next match of the episode. Okay, up next we have a Porygon 2 Reggie, Aleki, a Dragapult, Incineroar, Glastria, and Urshifu team. So, pretty solid looking team. Um, not too heavy on the Trick Room, but you've definitely got a Trick Room switch in there with the P2, the Glastria. So it's something that we need to be mindful of throughout this match. Very fast defensive mods outside of that with the Regieleki, the Dragapult. Going to make it very difficult for us to um, to kind of function. Uh, but this is where Clefairy can kind of come into its own and really cause a lot of issues for my opponent. Uh, and make it difficult for my opponent to kind of go after things like Spectre if we do decide to go down that route. Uh, the other option is obviously Glastria. We could go Clefairy Glastria here. Um, we just need to be careful around the, the Incineroar that we could potentially see from my opponent. I do feel like Urshifu could potentially be a decent Pokemon for us here. Um, we've just got to manage it pretty well, you know. You can't allow the, the to be in front of the Regieleki because that will cause us a few issues, even though we do have the focus sash there. But in the right kind of environment, it can do some decent work, especially if that is the... Um, the the single strike Urshifu, because we match up against that pretty well. Okay, we run out of time. Let's go Spectria, let's go Fairy, let's go Urshifu, and let's go Incineroar. Is that going to be all right? Yeah, it has to be because we're going to run out of time. Otherwise, it's a pretty solid team. It's going to be difficult for us to kind of approach. We know the threat, where they're coming from. Obviously, the Porygon 2, they're going to be the Trick Room threat here. Whether or not my opponent wants to go down that route, I don't know. Um, but the Dragapult always going to be an issue for us along with the Regieleki because the Regieleki can obviously support super well with things like Electro Web, which we can't get around with the redirection from Clefairy. Okay, what are we going to see? P2 and Incineroar. Pretty passive lead from my opponent, but it matches up pretty well against what we've got. Uh, they can go Trick Room, turn one if they want to. Um, and they do have Fake Out, so they can get around the Clefairy um, redirection this turn. Do they go for that? I mean, we could just help in hand Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam. But then we're locked into Trick Room, it might not be the best best scenario for us we could go help and hand mud shot it's probably enough to get the incineral gives us a special defense boost as well i think we go for that and try and remove the incineral the biggest problem for us here would be either shookerberry or assault vest um and the special defense boost is obviously going to be really useful for us the rest of this match and then we still got Clefairy to kind of help us out and stall out these trick room turns especially if we like if we can get the Incineroar here that's the big thing I'm pretty confident we should be able to the help in hand boost the other issue would be obviously if the Incineroar decides to go Dynamax and then things would get even trickier for us because we probably lose probably lose Spectre in that in that scenario and that probably loses us the game Right, helping hand coming out. Fake out. Yep. That's fine. You know the Incineroar's not really causing us any threat here. And we'll probably see a trick room from the P2. But we do get the Incineroar, which is huge for us. Now, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, this, because we get the Grim Nair boost, which is amazing. We get rid of the Incineroar, big threat to us. Uh, we get special attack boost, obviously, we've just mentioned. But the problem is, if the trick room goes up here... We do then allow my opponent to get in whatever they want in a trick room environment. Ooh, Eerie Impulse. 
It could be worse. It could be worse. No trick room there, though. That's that's good. Good start. Okay. Well, we're only minus one because of the Grimnir boost. So it's not the worst. We are special defense boost as well as that Grimnir boost, which definitely helps us out. Uh, but Eerie Impulse going to make it difficult for us to kind of build momentum here with, with uh, Spectre like you'd normally be able to do. Okay, Spectre coming in. Is it worth? Is it worth just getting damage onto the field now with like a max phantasm into that slot? Switching Clefairy out to Incineroar just to get the Intimidate, and then we got the option to Parting Shot the next turn because it's likely they go after the Clefairy because you kind of want to remove the redirection as soon as possible. And the big thing that you would think would come into that slot if they've got it would be um, a Steel Type Attack like Heavy Slam. Um, which Incineroar will be able to take pretty comfortably. The other option is obviously uh, a, the biggest attack that they've probably got access to, and that is going to be something like um, Max Hailstorm, which we don't mind too much. But the Intimidate is going to be so pivotal here, and we kind of want to try and cycle out these Intimidates in and out, in and out, in and out, and prevent any sort of chilling air boosts. Max Phantasm coming out, not going to do a great deal of damage uh, because of that minus one that we're now on. But the uh, the fence boost definitely going to help us out, especially if a Trick Room doesn't go up here because then the Glastro becomes a little bit more prone, susceptible to a Flare Blitz the next turn. Max Quake coming out. Uh, not ideal. Not ideal in the slightest, but better that Spectre is not taking damage because the big thing is we can switch Spectre out if we want at any point you know we can bring in something like okay the trick room going up like we could bring in Clefairy here for Spectre um or we could just max guard which might be a better play <sighs> what do we do do we bring in Clefairy actually I think what we'll try and do is just go there and we'll bring in Clefairy. We'll try and get a Max Phantasm off and we'll try and cycle at least one more Intimidate onto this onto this Glastria. We're probably going to see another Eerie Impulse come up from the P2, but at this point, you know, it's more about just lowering that defense. So when Urshifu comes in, the P2 is going to be easy to pick up and the Glastro is going to be easy to pick up. And we've just got to kind of try and utilize Clefairy and Cinero to the best of our ability going forward here. And hope that this turn, I mean, we're going to see a Max Quake, I think, into the Incineroar slot. It prevents, if you do that, you prevent the parting shot. You get rid, ooh, Max Knuckle. Uh, that works, that works. I mean, we're, we're, the thing is, we're just trying to, to stall out these Trick Room turns while trying to get some sort of benefit out of our max turns as well. Try attack coming out, no eerie impulse, which is always useful. Uh, doubling up into the Clefairy slot, fine by me. Okay, and another defense drop, which is useful. Okay, so Spectre is still in a pretty healthy position and we've got the option this next turn to actually just go follow me and Will-O-Wisp, um, which would completely shut the glass ray down and and make it not a threat at all and i think i'm kind of tempted i'm really i am tempted i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do it i think we need to take the opportunity to do it while we can uh because the burn onto it is just going to make it so much easier to deal with you've got to remember that the p2 is minus two defense now so if issue few comes in and it can get a close combat off into that slot then it's it's kind of game over really for it and the same can be said almost with the the glastria which will be able to probably pick up the knockout onto the clefairy this turn so you see another max quick it's yeah i mean that's fine and if we see i don't suppose we'll see a try attack here it makes you well the, the p2 cannot attack the spectria so that's something that we you know they can lower attack as much as they want but they can't damage us chilling their boost yeah try attack and then we get willow wisp which is ideal okay perfect and then we can bring incineral back in now And then we probably want to switch Spectria for Urshifu, I think. I think that probably makes more sense. Although it's risky because we don't really want to break the Sash on 
unintentionally. That's the thing. Um, but we do have access to this fake out now, which is which is huge for us. So it does allow us a little bit of room because the P2 can't really attack into the Spectre, which makes it a little bit easier to manage, if you get what I mean. Because you're, you're not going to try attack into the Urshifu, which does almost give us that kind of free switch in. And how many turns of Trick Room we got left? Is this the last turn? Potentially, I think this is the last turn. Should have checked, but I'm pretty... Pretty sure, pretty sure. We'll, we'll soon find out. It'd be nice in between these screens, you know, when you're on this screen, if you could just check the status. Is Trick Room still in play? Is the terrain still in play? Because it's not like you can affect anything, but it'd be nice to look at like field conditions. It's something that they could add in. It's something I've always thought about, you know, once you've locked your moves, you can't even go in to, to look. And, you know, it's, it's pretty awkward because you have to wait till the, the turn then to see what the situation is and that's fine and all but you only have so long per turn to do that get the fake out into the glass rear and then the flinch there and the try attack it's going to be into incineral yeah which we actually managed to survive which is perfect okay so we're in a great position now if the trick room does end we're in a fantastic position which it doesn't unfortunately so we can i think just protect here um, I think we can try. We can try and taunt the P2. I think that's not a bad play. Just protect, taunt. We could have switched into Spectra here as well, which probably would have been not a bad idea because then we get the Intimidate cycle once again. We get the Fake Out once again. Uh, but I feel like once, you know, once the Trick Room's ended, the P2 either has to switch out which a taunt will help force us switch out, which will make room for us to deal with this glass tree a little bit easier. Um, or the Spectre can come in and just cause havoc because it's such a fast Pokemon. Yeah, it's a P2 going out. Okay. Ah, it's Urshifu. Huh. Okay. Well. Could be worse. It could be worse. We survive with with three HP and get the taunt, which means it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Uh, okay. Well, I think what we'll do is <sighs> we can burn the Urshifu. I think what we'll do is let's let's just check. Let's just check this Urshifu. I know I should know. I know. I know. It is the water fighting type. Okay. Well, that means Spectre has got a way better matchup against it. We just go Surgeon Strikes into the opposing um, Glastria, and we'll go for a we'll go for a parting shot as well. Try and get one. We're not going to get it with uh, with Incineroar, but then we get the free switch into Spectre, which is which is better, you know. And then we always have the option to go for something like Hyper Beam and Close Combat. All hyper beam surgeon strikes into the, oppo the opposing Urshifu. It's not going to be like straightforward locking this up, but we should be okay. We'll be able to get rid of this Glastria before it becomes a bit of an issue. And if my opponent tries to go after our Urshifu, we, at least we got the parting shot, and then we got Intimidate on top of that, which will help. But I think they'll go after the the Incineroar here. No. Okay. Hmm. And they definitely got the sash. Okay, well, this just gets a little bit more tricky, of course, with everything so low. Um, oh, all right, well. Because Surgeon Strikes probably gets Spectria, but do you go that way? Do you go after it this turn? Because we could potentially Aqua Jet the opposing Urshifu, whereas they're going to Aqua Jet us. Um, yeah, they're going to Aqua Jet us. And we can't protect, which is really annoying. Um, hmm. Okay, let's switch to Incineroar. And let's go Shadow Ball. 
I don't suspect Shadow Ball. Oh, it might be. It might be enough. You know, it'll be enough to take it down with Sash. Actually, the close combat um, drop will make it. Will make it so that we can get it, and then an Aqua Jet will get it the next turn, and then just leave Spectre versus P2, which I don't know if there's going to be a way to do it past that point. Okay, there's the Aqua Jet. Yep. The, the, the best case scenario is going to be um, being able to see no Sash here. Of course there's a Sash. <laughs> uh, okay, and then we're going to need to win a speed tie, but maybe not. It's a trick and code. Oh. Ah. Not ideal. Not ideal. Not ideal. Okay. Uh, no, we've got Urshifu. We've got Urshifu left. Okay, this is going to come down to the wire. Now, I would have said, like, the Aqua Jet would have done the job there, but then reversing the Trick Room probably means that Urshifu faster than ours, which is not ideal. Um, I mean, we have to go for the Aqua Jet anyway. And we have to go for the Shadow Ball. Oh, do we, do we, though? Do we do that? Do we protect? Because they're probably going to go after Spectre now, but yeah, we have to Aqua Jet. We have to. We have to. And Shadow Ball is probably not the best player. I think like Mud Shot might be a better, better, sh better idea potentially. We get the Aqua Jet off, yeah, and at least you know they, if they go after Ursh, are they going to eerie impulse here though? That's the thing. There's Speed Tie, Try Attack. They're going after Urshifu, so at least we get a free Mud Shot off, and now they're going to they're going to eerie impulse us to. a Oblivion. We get the mud shot, which is great. Do we get an? Uh, is it? Oh, their speed falls, which is not ideal. Mm. Okay, we have to go. We've got no protect. They've got nowhere to damage us, though, so we can will o wisp them. We're gonna end up. I think. Uh, yeah, we're gonna need a crit hyper beam, <laughs> crit hyper beam, to do this. Hmm. Yeah, we'll probably end up like losing to our own recoil here, I think. Uh, even a, uh, a crit hyper beam would be enough, I think. A crit hyper beam would be enough. It would be enough, but I don't know if it's going to be. Can we? We can pray to the. We can pray to the hacks gods right now and say, "Come on, come on." Just do do it do one for us right now. That would that would be that would be all we want. Big Spectre just wants this hyper beam. Come on, crit 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 crit. No, oh, it's anything but a crit. It's terrible. And they're just gonna recover off the damage. Are they? Yeah, they're gonna like. I mean, they've got no option here. So at this point, uh, the video drags a little bit. So I'm just gonna speed this up as we try and pray to the RNG gods for that critical hit hyper beam, and uh, we'll just see how it unfolds. So I'm just gonna leave you with some music in theme of our prayers to uh, to try and get this critical hit to close this one out. I think we'll gracefully just I mean I could stall it out, but no none of you none of you want to sit here for two minutes and see this out. So I'm gonna just forfeit gracefully and say a very good game to my opponent. We we're both in an awkward position. We're both gonna play it out to the end. Grit our teeth, but I'm gonna say good game. And we're gonna wrap up this episode. But the team has been they you know, the team we not got the second win there today, but it doesn't always it doesn't always happen. I feel like the team did really well in that last game, so there's probably a couple of places where we maybe could have played it a little bit different, but it was against a very difficult team. Uh, so, you know, you can't always... I mean, we didn't get beat outright either, you know, came down right down to the wire. So, very good game to my opponent. We'll hop over now and get you all the rental team for today's squad. Here is today's rental card team, and uh, if you try it out, as always, do let me know down in the comment section, but at the end of it, I hope you enjoy it and have a lot of fun with it if you do try it out. I think there's a lot of 
of different ideas in the team and they're, they're quite nice ones that work together and make it quite cohesive uh, both obviously the Spectra and Glastria are very very strong options in this format and both can perform very well under the right circumstances uh, the Cortana as you can see there with that odd set of Leaf Blade Sacred Sword Substitute and Detect it is a little bit different with the Skull Plans there boosting critical hit ratios like I say it's a it's a real draw from uh, influence from previous generations and uh, I still think it does work quite well in this format under uh, certain situations we did see that in one game today where it was was phenomenal so if you do try it out i hope you enjoy it but um thank you so much as always for tuning in i look forward to hearing your thoughts about the team hope you've enjoyed today's episode and we'll be back very soon friends with another episode and uh, more vgc series 9 content so until then take care of yourselves and, and uh i'll see you all for the next episodes until then take care bye bye